Alright, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a, how to do the breakdown stage uh, when you're creating a rig. So we've got this little potato guy, it's a cute little guy, designed by Digital Gravy Animation. And I am going to do the breakdown in Harmony today. So I've already started a new Harmony file. So I just started a new file. It's ready to go. Um, I deleted the drawing that usually shows up there. I don't like that it always has... Uh, there's some features about it I don't like. I like to make my own. All right, I'll try to take you through every stage here. Um, first of all, in your preferences, make sure that you go to Advanced and uncheck this element node animate using animation tools default value you don't want that because when that thing is checked by default whenever you um, move a layer with animation tools in the camera view it's going to add keyframes to the drawing layer and we want to only be adding keyframes to the peg layer so please have that unchecked if you're following along it just means anytime that we create a new drawing layer it will not allow us to put uh, keyframes on it. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I am going to go File, Import, Images. I'm going to browse. I'm going to go and find what I need here. So I've got the potato turnaround. And I'll tell you, I'm using Windows, and this is my favorite way to do things. I will um, navigate in Windows and then just you simply click here, control C, and then in this dialog box that Harmony opened, I can just click up here and paste it. I don't like having to pick through all this stuff when I already have it open on my desktop. So here we go. Create layer, that sounds good. Keep as original bitmap. Yes, I don't want to vectorize it or anything. Project resolution. That sounds great. Transparency straight. Sounds excellent. All right, so here's the turnaround. Cool. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to center this guy. So I am going to use the red animate off mode and the transform tool. And you may be wondering why my toolbar looks like this here on the side. That is because I have gone to my preferences and I have chosen this option. It's called Flat Tool Toolbar. Um, and that makes it so that there are no drop downs. So, usually, like the contour editor, if you go to it, it'll open up another menu where you can go and get the cutter tool and stuff. I don't like to have to go into drop downs if I can help it. So, um, yes, I have done that. And then you can customize that toolbar by removing buttons. And I'll show you that in a second. One other thing that I, I think is significant for you to make sure that you have checked is you want default separate position for pegs. This will make it so that XYZ components of the pegs are separate if you ever want to change their function curves and their easing. Otherwise, it will bundle them all together and the XYZ will never be separatable. They'll all move together. Uh, it's great to leave it that way for camera moves, but not for a uh, character rig. You want those things to be separate. All right, so before I get into the breakdown, I'll just show you really quickly how to customize your toolbar. Um, if you get the Flat Tools toolbar working, you'll try to right click on it and you can't find the customize button. It's kind of weird, it's a little glitch. So what you have to do is you have to dock your tools toolbar somewhere else. So I'm just right clicking up in the main tool toolbar area, then I can right click, then I can choose customize. Then I can add things or I can remove them. So I am just gonna put that back in. And then if you want to rearrange the order of things, you just click on the button and you click up and down and then you click apply. Actually, I'm gonna put it up here next to this. Okay, so that's how you can customize it. And just so you know, you can't drag it from the main toolbar to your camera. You have to right click up here in your camera toolbar, choose tools. It'll automatically go up here to the top right. Uh, click and drag that, dock it here on the left. Okay, so here we are working with our tools. I've got the turnaround. So I want the red animate off mode and the transform tool. I'm gonna move this over here. 
I'm going to click on uh, this little camera, camera mask and this one. This is called the camera safe, the safe area. I just want to see where the center of the screen is, lining him up. And actually, in Harmony 20, I can press Enter to get a little mini node view and type grid. Uh, if you don't have Harmony 20, you can always come here to the node view. Oops, sorry, node library is what I meant. And then you could type in grid and pull it from there. I'll press undo. Okay, so here, this is going to help me so I can position this guy dead center. All right, I'm just looking at his eyeballs there, centering it. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to move this stuff over here. And I'm going to put it into a reference uh, backdrop. I like to organize things with backdrops. Uh, it makes things easier to find in the node view. So I'm just going to select all this stuff. And usually you come up here to the hamburger menu. You choose insert backdrop. And I set a shortcut as insert. Let me just show you how you could set a shortcut. Keyboard shortcuts. Um, you could type in uh, backdrop in the search box, create backdrop. I'm on a PC, I have an insert button on my keyboard and that just makes sense to me. Insert backdrop. Uh, okay. All right, so here it is. I'm going to color this red and I'm gonna title it reference. I'm gonna create a, uh, I'm gonna select this and press control H. Um, what that did is it inserts a backdrop, or sorry, a composite. All right, I'm gonna hold Alt to drag this into this cable. I'm gonna hook the grid into this composite. And then I am going to add another drawing layer, Control R. Again, you can find all of these things up here, insert, Control R, Control Y, all this fun stuff. I would recommend memorizing all of these. I, I use almost all of them. I don't do the effects one, and uh, but I use the others. Okay, so I'm going to press Control R to add a drawing layer. I want to call this breakdown. Add and close. All right, it's right here. Now notice that I can click anywhere. I'm I'm clicking my middle mouse button and dragging. That is because I have this preference set. Sorry, I'm bouncing all over the place, but I want you to understand how I'm doing this. In the node view, you want to uncheck, in the node view tab, you want to uncheck middle mouse button pans the view, because uh, you can press spacebar to pan the view. Um, but holding middle mouse is great because you can select a bunch of stuff, hold and click middle mouse and drag without having to zoom in and left click and drag. So. That's my preference that I like. Okay, I'm gonna plug the breakdown in over here. I can disable the grid just by pressing D. All right. So now let's uh, make sure that this little potato dude is sized how we want it to be. I recommend making sure that when you're sizing a character, you bring in a character lineup so it has all of the characters that are gonna be in a series or an episode or something and then you want to size that image so that the tallest character still fits inside of the camera, inside of this uh, camera mask area, okay? So this guy, he's gonna be his own character. There's not gonna be a whole bunch of other characters. So I am using the transform tool and the animate off and I just temporarily move that little pivot here. I'm gonna hold control shift middle mouse. That's a shortcut for scale down towards the pivot. Now I'm going to hold shift and middle mouse to drag straight down. I just want this to be centered. Maybe I'll bring this down and just center his eyes again. I guess I didn't really need the grid as long as I have that little X in the middle. Shift and middle mouse to drag straight up. And I like it. I can delete my grid. Goodbye. And I am ready to start with the breakdown. So I am going to turn off the camera mask view. I'm going to turn off the little X in the middle of the screen. 
And now I am going to start writing my breakdown stuff. Okay, so whenever you start a Harmony file, it gives you a palette, a scene palette, that is named after whatever your uh, scene is named. Now, I don't really care for this one. I'm just going to delete it. I'm going to make my own, and I'm going to call it pot because it's for potato. I always give a three-letter prefix to my characters. Okay, so I've got, I'll just call this one lines. I will probably rename that later because it's kind of generic. All right, I'm just going to press plus, 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 plus. I want a bunch of stuff. And uh, I'm just going to name what I know I need right now. I'm going to have a sketch swatch. And I'm going to have a trace swatch. And I think that that's going to be enough for me for now. OK, with my sketch swatch, I love to draw with a Kali Race uh, Prismacolor blue pencil. And this is about that color on paper. That's what I like to use. And I'm going to bring the opacity down. So the alpha, it's the max is 255. So half of it would be like 120, 125, 122 and a half, but they don't have the, the half. Um, with trace, I'm going to pick the most bright, obnoxious green that I can get. And I'm also going to take the alpha down on that too. All right, I'll come back through here and name all these things later. Okay, but right now we're focusing on the breakdown. And this is just taking notes of everything that we need. So I'm gonna click on the sketch swatch. I'm gonna use my brush tool. Okay, so I'm using my solid brush. Yeah, and I just want to write everything that I need for this character. And I kind of don't like how grainy this looks right now. So the reference, I'm going to click on the reference, the potato turnaround image, and I'm going to come up here to my um, camera toolbar, and I have added the bitmap image quality to it. Let me just show you again how you can customize your, uh, your toolbar. So if you didn't have it, you would just go find it, the little sunshine in the mountain, and bring it over, hit apply. Um, anything down at the bottom is going to show up on the right. And uh, I've got a bunch of like, little custom scripts and things that I like to have here. But with this image selected, I can click on the little bitmap image quality, pump it up as much as I can, press OK. And now it's crisp and clean, and I like it. OK, so I'm going to go to the breakdown. I'm going to click on the little light bulb, which is the light table. I can click on these settings to show how much I'm washing out the background. I just want to be able to write over it and not be so worried about how clear that is. Okay, I'm on the breakdown layer. I'm using the brush tool, using the solid brush, and I'm ready to start taking some notes. All right, so let's start at the top. So we've got this, I'm going to go full screen, control F twice. Okay, so this uh, this hat, it looks like it gets a little inconsistent as it goes through the turn, so I will probably do it myself. But I, I like to number things, so let's say that this is going to be one, two, three, four. If I were um, breaking down a character that had hair, I would number each of those pieces as well. So um, let's just call that uh, hat. hat one, hat two, hat three, hat four. Okay, now next we're gonna have the hat brim. And then let's just call these uh, brim lines. And then I'll, I'll just number them one, two, three, whatever. And I'll probably have some more on the back. All right, we've got the brow. I'm pressing one and two, and I'm using my stylus as I write. Uh, let's do um, spot. Sometimes I put an underscore, sometimes I don't. Let's not do underscores. Let's just stick the number there. So I've got spot one. So that's going to be one, two, three. All right, 
then this is going to be the eye. So this is the part that would have the white. And then I've got the pupil. And then I'm going to call this the pupil HL for highlight. All right. I've got a mouth. Let's see, what shall we call this? We could call this uh, handkerchief. But that's a little kind of a long word. Bandana, that's shorter. Sure. We'll go bandana. And then we will save. Yeah, great, thank you. Um, I'm just going to call this tie up and tie down. I like to keep layer names as short as I can. All right, let's take a look here. So I also need the torso. So let me just make a note of that over here. And that will that'll be the whole body, just as one piece. It's kind of a simple character. Don't have to worry about a separate waist, which is kind of nice. All right, next up, let's let's worry about this. All right, so this is going to be the flap. And then BTN up and BTN down. Okay. And now we've got the arm. Now let me show you how I like to do the arm. Maybe I'll do it on this. No, I will do it on this side. I'm just going to move flap away. All right. So when I'm doing an arm, wh where is that going to rotate from? Yeah, probably right there, right? Like that'll be the point that it rotates from. Here's the wrist, okay? Let's just imagine that we've got a circle here. And I want the pivot point between those two to be in the dead center. So if you're looking at my arm, here's where this rotates, here's where this rotates. And if I went straight out, you'd see that the pivot point is kind of in the middle. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna hold shift, draws a straight line, select it. All right, there's the dead center. So I'm going to put a little mark there with my brush tool. I'll select this with my select tool. All right, let me just draw that kind of, that's where I want my pivot point. All right, and so then there's going to be like a, we call it an articulation circle. That's going to be right there. And I want you to know something that I did on this, uh, the character design, originally the sleeve was right here in the middle and that can get hard to deal with. I'd say you choose to have the sleeve below the articulation circle or above. It just makes it a lot easier, less stuff to worry about. It's just not as compl complex. All right, so that's looking good. So the way that I like to name this stuff is I'm gonna call it up arm or upper arm, and then we'll go for forearm. We'll go for hand. And then there's going to be a sleeve. Now, maybe I'll write out how I'm going to make this sleeve work over here. So the sleeve, you know, for simplicity's sake, I think what I'll do is I'll just call this the forearm. And then this hand, the hand can be complete and it will just sit behind most of the time. So that'll be easy for me. So then I need one more piece. I'll just call this cuff. So it's just that line. Uh, sometimes what I like to do when I start having a lot of things um, piling on top of each other, especially in a breakdown, is I'll go, uh, maybe I'll just make another thing called handle. I know that I'm going to want something called handle later on. So I'm going to make this purple. Um, if you are not familiar with this uh, view, oh, sorry, here. You double click, you have to double click to just the right spot so you don't get the, the name, but you get the, <laughs> uh, the color. Um, I can go to single wheel mode. This is the default way that Harmony opens, but I like to use the multiple wheel mode so you can just toggle between them. 
Another thing that we can do to make our life a little bit easier while we're naming all this stuff is we can right click and then not have swatch mode. That way you can double click over here to rename it or double click here to open up the color. So that's nice for this stage. All right, so handle. Um, this simply gives me another color. I'm using the select tool, the black arrow selector. I'm just gonna select all this stuff. This just helps when there's tons of things on top of each other. I just like to use another color. Okay, so that cuff, um, I'm going to say, let's move the flap over here, that the cuff will be revealed on forearm. The technical way of saying it is that the cuff line would be invert cut to the forearm, but I think reveal is a little easier for people to understand. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, looking good. All right, so now we've got this line. So this line right here is going to be the the base of the coat. So maybe instead of flap, I'm going to press and hold D, I guess my dropper tool, and I'm going to say coat flap, coat underscore flap. Um, and then this, let's see, how do I want to do it? I think maybe what I'll do is I will have a line that's right here and a line that's right here to give me that coat. I think that that would be pretty easy to deal with. Yeah. Let me just tell you what's going through my head right now. Okay, so we know that we're gonna need like the potato color as the base color. And then on top of that, I'm gonna want the pants. So here, let's just number it. So first layering, and then second layering is gonna be the black pants color. The next layering is we're going to have the coat. So three. Um, coat color and then on top of that we're going to have the bandana okay so that is the layering that we're going to need to worry about now let me turn off the breakdown just for a second so I can analyze this a little bit more so it looks like the handkerchief is never going to be outside of the body and notice how when the handkerchief gets to the edge of the body i'm probably going to want the red line to show up on the outside instead of it being like the gray line of the coat so i'm thinking about how am i going to make that work when i slide this over how can i have it reveal um, all of that stuff and uh, so th that's what's important to do here in the breakdown now I'm gonna start talking about tricky stuff so I'm, I'm just gonna get a different color I'll use a sketch I'll use handle okay so the outline okay so the line of torso is going to be revealing that uh, coat line color, that gray, and it's also gonna be revealing the darker red. So how do I make that work? <sighs> okay, <laughs> I think I figured it out. All right, here's the setup that I'm thinking I will do. So for the 
bandana. Maybe I'll just explain it up here. Maybe I'll even just type the thing, make it a little easier for myself. All right, for the bandana, what I'm gonna do is I am going to put, I'm gonna use an overlay layer and that will have dark fill color. You'll see what I mean in a second. Line art layer is gonna have just the dark line color. And then the color art layer is going to have the um, red fill color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell myself copy red fill to overlay and use darker swatch. And let me just pull this out. I'm going to control A, select all, shrink that. All right, cool. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the overlay will only show up slash be revealed by the line art of the torso. I think that that will work. And then I will do a similar building technique for the coat. Coat similar to bandana. And it may be just for simplicity's sake and not having it sitting out there in nowhere land. I'll do this. Okay, this is what's so important to do when you are breaking things down. You need to think through that stuff. And I know that if, if you're new to Harmony, you might not understand what I'm talking about there. Don't worry, you'll see it as I build. All right, so let's get back to breaking things down. All right, so with the, the coat, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have the coat so it extends out past... Uh, where it is um, on the body and that way I can move it how I need to. Okay. On we go. So now with the pants. Alright, let's go back to the sketch layer. Uh, I'll just call that waste. right here. I might as well let it extend a little bit because the the coat is going to be over top of it. All right, now to something a little bit more simple. All right, so we're going to have this uh, foot. This is going to be the bottom of it. And then here's where it's going to rotate on the body. And then I'm going to hold shift, draw something straight, select it. All right, I'm seeing the middle is right there. Brush tool. Delete that. Don't need it anymore. Just put a little dot. All right, so that is where my articulation circle is going to be. So I'm going to have up leg and then shin and then shoe. Now let's look at the shoe and see how this is going to work. Now, since it's going to be pure black, I'm not going to see any of these deep interior details. So I'm thinking with this shoe, I could get away with making a deformer shoe that will tween perfectly between all of the views. Yeah, so I'm thinking what I want to do is I'm going to make a shoe that looks like this. So I'll have a deformer point here. Actually, let me use the green. I'll just delete that. Deformer point here, 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 and in the middle. Yeah, because then this is going to come down there. This will go over here. And then this can come out to the side. Yeah, 
So I'm just, I'm starting it in a nice neutral position so that I can move it this way, the point of the shoe, or that way. And I won't have to do a, a minus one X scale flip. All right, cool. So that is going to be my shoe. I think that that is everything. Let's look through the rest of the turnaround and see if there are any other considerations that we need to have. Oh, and I might as well write what was on my mind. Um, shoe uh, deforms uh, through turnaround. A lot of the time if you're using, if you're drawing a shoe that has a lot of details like shoelaces and stuff, you'll just want to draw swaps because it's so complex and it's easier to manipulate. All right, so my thought here for the, the body is that I'm just going to build it so that uh, it's going to be one giant envelope deformer. And I'll probably need a pivot point or a deformation point here, 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 and here. You want to use as few deformer points as possible just to make your life easier. So there's less stuff to keep up with. Now, will I be able to get all of these shapes from that? Yeah, I think I can. You know, if I had just four points there, would I still be able to get it? I think so. Uh, my only concern is that it looks like I need to make a little crease. So let's let's call that out. We need a, a crease. And maybe we'll just call it out on this side because I always like to build this part of the turn first. Okay. Are there any other elements that we didn't see in the front view? Well, it looks like we'll need a crease on both sides. So maybe I'll just call it crease one and crease two. Maybe I will put an underscore just so it doesn't look funny. Creasel. There. All right. Um, I guess with the bandana, it's going to need a back, and I didn't see that until now. Yeah, you'll see that there's a back there, and this is going to be the front. All right, so let's let's list that. So this is going to be bandana. underscore BK. I like to use that as a, an abbreviation. As you can see, I like to use FR for front, QF for quarter front, PR for profile, QB for quarterback, BK for back, QF for quarter front, the second. Uh, that's that's wrong. I wrote should be QB2 for quarterback two, profile two, quarter front two. All right, let's talk about any other building considerations that we need. I think this is all working pretty well. I think my strategy for the torso, like the coat, is instead of actually moving it through the body, I think I'm just gonna like deform it so that it will look like it's changing. I, I may change my mind. Let, let me just show you what the options could be. I could start by making a coat that does this. That way, as it rotates through, it'll be able to handle the front view. So that is a nice, simple way to do it. But uh, if I need to squash and stretch and deform the torso very much, I don't want it running into all of that overshot stuff. So I think just using deformers will be best. I think I want to play with it. As time goes by, I will end up just making like a bubble out of this, a bubble out of this, a bubble out of this. Oh, speaking of bubbles. I think 
I need to have another piece. So that's going to be, I'm going to get a different color. So I'm going to have the bottom. And then that will extend up here. So there won't be any blank spaces because I'm going to want to be able to move those bubbles around really easy. So this will be um, hat uh, line, hat top line, sounds good, hat top line. And then just to make it so that it's easy to move these things around, I don't want anything to come down below this ever. So what I'm going to do is I am going to do like a cutter kind of thing. So on the underlay layer, that's usually like where I like to put cutter stuff. I'm going to tell it um, to cut the, the bubbles. So cut one through uh, cut numbered bubbles with UL under layer okay. under layer art cut numbered bubbles with underlay art Okay, shift X to reset my view. Oh, I, I'm holding control and alt to uh, change the rotation of my screen and then shift X to reset the view. All right, I think I'm ready to start building. And um, it's always a good idea to look through your entire turnaround to make sure that you have, that you have what you need. Um, while we're at it, let's just take a look at the Special poses. Okay, so we're going to need a mouth. Doesn't look like we need teeth, but it will be good to have a tongue. And then we'll have that. That's kind of fun. So I guess we need a separate piece for the tongue. The hands we will leave as swaps. Oh, here's something else. We have a little texture to put underneath the eyes. And so that's going to be kind of like a little cheeks kind of thing. So let's go ahead and do that while we're at it. Let's call that out. So we will do blush. We'll call that blush. Okay, just gonna go back to that. We need a tongue. So mouth, I think, will be just fine. And uh, then we will do a tongue. Okay, I bet you I did not catch everything, but I think I caught most of the stuff and I figured out the hard parts, the tricky parts um, of how we're going to make sure that the, the correct line colors show up for the bandana and everything. So it's, it's always a good idea to do this breakdown stage before you move into the rigging so that you have a clear idea of where you want to go. Uh, another reason for doing this is so that you could show someone else what your plan is and troubleshoot it together. Uh, you can usually give each other some good ideas that way. All right, uh, next up, we are going to work on the next stage. See you soon.